thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for every person who have turned aside time to be here uh, in your presence tonight to study the word with us, and we honor you for them. We pray for those who are on their way. Uh, we ask that you would give them traveling grace. Let them make it here safe and sound. We also pray for those who are at work or who are sick or who just could not make it tonight. We pray, God, that your blessing be upon them, that the same grace that's upon this house also be upon theirs. God, we ask that you would encamp your angels around this building to protect us and keep us, Lord. And, Father, we just pray for our study tonight. God, do with it only what you can do. Father, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Will you put your hands together? Amen and amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hey, listen, as y'all come in, um, um, we, we y'all, next time when you guys come a little closer to the front, y'all feel like y'all sitting so far back away from me. Amen. So, um, yeah, so if, if, if your heart is convicted, if, yeah, just come on up. Y'all sit so far back. Yeah, y'all like y'all be trying to go to the back door. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. That's, now, give everybody give a hand. Give everybody a hand. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, come on up. Stop sitting so far back. Y'all be, y'all be sitting in y'all assigned seat from Sunday. Yeah, 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 y'all come up a little closer to the front. Yeah, make it like one big happy family. It looks better on camera, too. Amen, amen. So, 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 so we thank God, thank God for all of you guys being here tonight. Um, let me say this, um, and, and hopefully, hopefully for those who are watching online, um, I, I want to share this with you, and I think God's been pr- pl- uh, kind of placing it on my heart as well, um, don't, get, don't get so comfortable watching TV on Facebook. Don't, don't get so comfortable doing that. Um, Facebook is designed for those who cannot make it to the house of God, for those who cannot make it here. Um, I think what's happening now is we have a group that's very consistent, and they show up every Sunday, every Wednesday, very consistent. But then there's a group that say they wake up, and it's like, oh, I don't want to go there. I'll just watch online. You know, there was a time when I was growing up where watching online was not an option. <laughs> that was because <laughs> we didn't have no online. <laughs> we had a fishing line, but we didn't have no online. <laughs> Amen. Um, so we, we didn't have it. But, but I, just, I just encourage those of you who can make it to the house of God, you need to get here because we miss you and we miss your presence and we, we desire to see you. And uh, part of your responsibility to the house of God is to be connected to the house of God. Amen. Amen. So again, if you can be here, it's important. It's important that you are. Which cameras? On? I need to look in the camera and tell the people. Yeah, get on camera one, camera three, whichever camera I'm on. We need that little light on the top. We don't want. Okay, those of you who are watching, I encourage you. Come to the house of the Lord. Amen. That's right. That's right. It's, it is. It's serious because if 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 we're not careful, Satan is just gonna Satan's gonna woo us to sleep. And Satan's going to cause us to lose power. Uh, there, there is a synergy that is, that is created when we come together uh, as a body of believers and we worship the Lord together. There's a, there's a synergism. There's, a, there's an energy that is produced when we come together. Again, so, so when you wake up, listen, take, take the whole Facebook option out of your mind and just make it up in your mind. I've got to get to the house of the Lord. Amen. I've got to get there uh, because there, there, is, there was a time when we could not come. We could not come, and then we open the house of God back up. Then, of course, we, you know, we're, we're rushing to get back. Amen. So I just want to share that. Now, you'll hear me say that again um, just so that, you know, we kind of put that in the atmosphere and keep that out there. Um, if you can't get to the house of God, you need to, to do your best to get here. Amen. It, it's, like, it's also like the people who have a handicap sticker but not really handicapped. You know you're not handicapped, and nothing wrong with you. You've been in the house dancing and shaking around and chasing the kiddos. Now, there's nothing wrong with you. Amen. So there's nothing wrong with you. Stop parking that handicapped spot. Stop doing that. Because if you was really handicapped, then you'd be sick. Now you'd be mad. So don't do that. If you're not handicapped, park somewhere else. Let the people who really need that handicapped spot park in the handicapped spot. Now, that's even for those of you who borrow somebody's car. Who has a handicap sticker? <laughs> Amen, somebody. Because you feel like just because they got a handicap, handicap sticker, you can park in a handicap spot. Y'all better stop that. You hear me? You better stop that. What if, what if God gave you your desire? What if God made you handicapped? 
so you could park in a handicapped spot for real. Then you wouldn't want to park in a handicapped spot. You want your legs back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody in this house. Amen. So stop doing that. Stop doing that. So what am I saying? Stop staying home if you know you can get to church. Stop staying home if you know you can get here. If you know you can get to church, do your best to get here. Amen. Um, with that being said, so we, we have a group of ministers that will, be, that will be graduating. They will be doing their final, um, I guess it's an oral dissertation. They're, they'll be doing their final sermon or not, well, actually their, their closing sermon uh, this coming Sunday. And I'm excited about that. Um, but they gave me a list of topics that they would, that they would like to discuss or like to learn more about. Um, and the class, we, we had to really put a lot of information in a short period of time, so I was not able to get to all of the topics they would like. So I'm going to use a couple of Wednesday nights to kind of deal with some of those topics. And I just thought it was apropos that um, we, are, we are moving into the, the Christmas season um, that we would deal with one of the topics. So tonight, I want to talk about angels. I, I want to talk about understanding angels. Understanding angels. And again, this is the perfect season to talk about angels. Perfect season. Now, I, I need to apologize ahead of time. There's a lot of scripture that we're going to turn to. So I pray that you brought a good Bible or you have a good thumb that can scroll that page of that phone, that screen of that phone really good. Um, I do also encourage you when you come when you come to Bible study, come prepared to take some type of notes. Um, so again, we're gonna we're gonna look at we're gonna look at a lot of different scripture because there's there's a lot of misconception about angels, a lot of uh, things that have been taught, a lot of fallacy been taught about angels. And so, although I don't think we'll ever fully understand everything about angels, I think the Bible does a great job giving us um, a lot of information, a lot of uh, great tools to help us uh, as we uh, do our best to understand angels. Amen. So angels are, are personal spiritual beings who have intelligence. Angels are intelligent, they have an emotion, and they have will. Now, I need, I need to say this before I get into all of this, that we are not to worship angels. We're not to worship angels. We're not to pray to angels. Uh, the only person we pray to is God. We don't worship angels. We only worship God alone. Amen. And that's important. Um, but they have, they have intelligence. They have emotion. And they have will. So, so angels, angels think. They're not robots. Angels think. Uh, angels can make decisions. Um, matter of fact, you know, Satan was, Lucifer was an angel. And Lucifer made some decisions. He operated, in, he operated according to his will. Angels were designed by God to worship him and to carry out his assignments here on this earth. And so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna look at some of those. Um, and there are, there, there are good angels and there are evil angels. Amen? There are good angels and evil angels. Uh, the evil angels, we classify them as demons. We classify them as demons. Uh, let, let me explain it like this. We have, we have good humans and bad humans. Amen? We have, we have humans that follow the law and we have humans that break the law. The human that, that follow law, we call them productive citizens. The humans that break the law, what do we call them? Call them criminals. Now, what's the diff difference between the two? One's good. <laughs> One group made good decisions. The other ones just got caught. Amen? Amen. Okay. So the same thing is true with demons. We have, so, so, so humans... Humans that break the law, we call them convicts. Or, we, or, or they, when they get caught breaking law, we call them convicts. Okay, the same thing is true with, with, with angels. There are angels who broke the law. Satan broke the law in heaven. When Satan broke the law, Lucifer broke the law in heaven, uh, he became a convict angel, so to speak. Or we call them demons. Amen? Uh, so keep, keep it in mind as we look through, through the scripture. So I'll go to Matthew chapter number 8. Matthew chapter number 8. Um, and while you're finding Matthew chapter number 8, remember there are three primary types of angels. Three primary types of angels. Um, there's archangels, there are cherubim, and seraphim. Those three primary, uh, primary types of angels, um, I, I'll, I'll get into a little bit more details about them a little bit later on, maybe in another teaching. The archangels are, are usually the one that we see them um, um, operating in spiritual warfare. We see archangels operating in spiritual warfare. Actually, the Bible only names Michael as an archangel. He only names him, but there's another scripture in the Bible that says that, um, that, that Michael is one of the princes. So, so the Bible suggests that there, there could be other archangels, but we know, we know definitively that Michael was an archangel. Then you have the cherubim. The cherubim are uh, the angels that 
that God, we, we see the cherubim in the book of Genesis, where uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, that God put cherubim there in the garden at the gate to protect the gate, to keep um, Adam and Eve from coming in and out. As a matter of fact, Satan was known as the anointed cherub, so he was a cherubim as well. Then you have the seraphim. The seraphim are the angels with the six wings. Uh, these are the ones that we see flying around the throne of God, uh, crying out, holy, holy, holy. As a matter of fact, uh, it was a seraphim that actually took a coal from the altar and actually touched the lips of Isaiah. Uh, so this seraphim was actually, um, um, he, was, he, was, he was a part of the purification process for Isaiah. Now, let's talk about angels possessing intelligence. Everybody say angels are intelligent. All right, let's look at it. Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 29 says, uh, And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, Son of God? So they knew who Jesus was. They knew he was Jesus. They knew he was the Son of God. And they said, Have you come to torment us before our time? So they knew They knew that they committed a crime, and they knew they'd been sentenced. So, so, so demons are angels who committed crimes and have been sentenced to punishment. And so these angels, they were intelligent enough to know who Jesus was, to know that he, he had come, and to know that they had been sentenced. So they have intelligence. They knew that they are sentenced um, to, go, to, to go into the fiery pit. They understand it. They get it. So demons are intelligent. Now, um, or angels are intelligent. Angels are intelligent. Now, 2 Corinthians, you don't have to turn that, but this will be on the screen. So I'll have you turn to some. I'll have you look at the screen for some. So 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 3 says, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve with his what? With his craftiness. Now, you can't be crafty without being intelligent. So, so angels are intelligent. They're intelligent. He deceived Eve with his craftiness so your minds may be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. So you cannot be deceptive, or excuse me, you cannot be crafty without being intelligent. So angels possess intelligence. All right, let's move on. Now, angels show emotion. Everybody say emotion. Angels show emotion. Go to Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2. And again, we're going to look at Scripture because I want you guys to see it. I want you guys to, we're going to dig down a little bit in some of this uh, because I want you guys to understand that as we approach the, the Christmas season, so when we talk about when angels showed up or when angels um, spoke to Mary, when we talk about that, then you, you guys will have a fresh revelation. You'll have, a, you have a, a, a deeper understanding or a deeper appreciation when you hear about the angel spoke to Mary or the angel appeared to Joseph. When you, when you start hearing those stories, then those stories will make, those stories will make more sense when you understand a little bit more about angels. Angels show emotions. Luke chapter 2, verse number 13. Luke chapter 2, verse number 13. Angels show emotion. And suddenly there was with the angels, with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, praising God and saying, and it goes on to talk about how they were, how they were saying, holy, holy, holy. So um, you cannot praise God without, without showing emotion because emotion is connected to praising God. Amen? Now, that's, watch this. You can, you can stem, come to church and you can clap your hands, but just because you're clapping your hands doesn't mean that you're praising God. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Just, just because you clap, watch this, you can invite people to your birthday party, but just because they show up don't mean that they like you. Come on, talk back to me now. So just because people show up to church don't mean that they love God. Just because they clap their hands don't mean that they're worshiping God. You know, we say, also, we say, come on, give God some praise, and people clap their hands. Now, now many people just, just clap their hands, but some people, some people are clapping because you understand, you understand the things that God has done for you. You understand that God, that God has made some ways for you. Glory to God. So you are applauding the God that does. It's, it's almost like, it's almost like when, when, uh, when your son or daughter does something amazing. They do something that, that you're really proud of, and you clap because you're so proud of them. Amen? So, so it, it's, it's, that, it's that enthusiasm that you get when you applaud and you clap, clap your hands to God. So whenever, whenever you clap, and, and I just I challenge you moving forward, whenever you clap uh, and you give God some praise, I need you to think about something. I need you to, watch this, watch this, because when you think, it becomes easier to think. 
uh, for when you think, it becomes easier to think. So when you think about something that God has done for you in your life, then you can really clap your hands. Oh, you can really thank God. Hallelujah. Now watch, let me try how easy it is. I want you to think about something that God has done for you in your life. Just think about it right now. Just get it on your mind, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Has, did, has God done to something significant for you in the past couple of days? Maybe today God did something. See, somebody already clapping over there. Somebody already thinking. So when, it, when you think, so listen, come on. It, it, well, once you get it, I want you just to thank God. God, thank you. Hallelujah. Listen, let me, let me tell y'all something. Check this out. Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. I, my, my, I, I, I took some clothes to cleaners this morning. Clothes to the cleaners, went in, paid for my clothes, dropped them off, came back out, got in my truck. My truck wouldn't crank. I said, oh, man, what's going on? It turned over and over and over and over and over. Check this out. I'm telling you how cool God is. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I sat in my truck. Said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What can I do? God said, well, call. call. So I called my wife. She was at work. She said, I'll come get you. And she, look, she was so sweet. She said, she said I'll, I'll come pick you up and you can keep my car. I said, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm telling you how, how good God is. I'm telling you how good God is. So I was like, well, no, I don't want you to leave work and come up here. I said, well, let me call up to the church. Call up to the church, and uh, Dee Dee and Sharice were going to the bank. I said, listen, I tell y'all what, while y'all out, come scoop your ball up. So they came up, they came up, and they brought the, they brought the van. And listen, I look like, yeah, I, I look like the president. So, so they came up, and they pushed that little button, that door opened. That door open. I said, listen, what's up, y'all? I sat down. <laughs> yeah, I sat down. They closed the door. And check this out. So, so I'm like, okay, I got to get my truck and whatever, whatever. So then I was there. I came, to, came on over here, and I'm going to think, worry about praying. Okay, God, God, what, do whatever you got to do. And check this out. Check this, I, I called my cousin. I said, hey, man, something wrong with my truck. He said, when I get off, I'll come look at it. He went in like, I said, man, I think it's a fuel pump. I got to put a fuel pump. So in my mind, I'm thinking I can buy a fuel pump. You know what he did? He went and he changed the fuse. He said, call me. He said, crunk right up. How much does it cost? $3. That's the God that I serve. You hear me? That's the God that I serve. That's a God. See, see, see what y'all doing. See what y'all just did. See what y'all just did. See what you just did. See, now you're thanking God for a reason. Now, see, I ain't even tell y'all to clap. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't never tell you to clap because now you're thanking God and you're celebrating the God that's been so good. So what am I saying to you? Don't ever give God an empty praise. Don't ever give God a dry praise. Whenever you praise God, give something on your mind and say, God, I thank you that you woke me up. God, I thank you that you gave me my activity of my limb. God, I thank you that you put food on the table. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Day. God, and you thank God for the things He's done for you in your life. Because that's what the angels are doing. The angels are thinking all the time. The angels are crying, Holy, holy. Why? Because they're looking at the things that God are doing. So, so what am I telling you? Don't ever go a day. Don't ever go a day. Never go a day without recognizing the thing that God has done for you in your day. Don't ever go a day without thanking God for being good to you. Glory to God. Do me a favor. If you sit beside somebody you like. <laughs> I want you to tell them one thing God did for you today. Tell them. Don't somebody woke me up. Y'all, that's, no, that's cheap. You're cheating. That's obvious. You're in this building. <laughs> it's obvious he woke you up. <laughs> what did he do for you? I told y'all what he did for me. That's just one of many things that he did for me. <laughs> what did he do for you today? Glory to God. Because the Bible says that mercy, I, I, I see you clapping. That's what I'm talking about. The Bible says that mercies are renewed every day. It's new mercy every day. If you can't thank God for nothing but new mercy, that God didn't kill you while you were in your mess, you ought to, God, I just thank you. See, y'all, now y'all, now y'all doing it. God, I thank you for new mercy. God, I thank you that you didn't, anybody thank that God didn't give up on you? Glory to God. As many times you went back to your vomit, back to that old stuff, back to that old life, God never gave up on you. You want to just thank God for just not God. I thank you that you didn't give up on me. Woo! Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. They show emotion. Angels praise God with emotion. That's what we have to do. We have to praise God with emotion. You've got to, you've got to praise God with, with, on your, with, with, with what he's done for you on your mind. You ought to come to church. You ought to come to church with a thank you already in your heart. Because you've been counting the things that God's been doing for you all day long. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You were texting and driving and God kept your car in the middle of the road. You ought to say, God... I got a big clap somewhere up in here. 
<laughs> you ought to just you ought to thank you ought to just thank God. Thank God for what He's done and for what He's doing. Go to James chapter two. <whistles> now don't turn there. Just look at the screen. Look at the screen. I got a roll. James chapter two, verse nineteen. Say, you believe there is one God? Good. <laughs> but even the angels who are convicted, felons, believe that. And they tremble with fear. Fear is a real emotion. So demons tremble. In other words, Angels fear God. Are y'all hearing that? Glory to God. Even they understand it. They understand and they fear. Um, um, demons have a fear of punishment. Angels, the good angels, have a reverential fear of God, a respectful fear of God. It's the same fear that, that you had uh, for, for Big Mama. I can't talk about these mamas nowadays. <laughs> Things a little different. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, y'all know, I'm talking about Big Mama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about real Big Big Mama didn't play that stuff that, the, you know, folk play now, but they, they didn't play that. Is that, is that. that respect, that kind where, you know, we had so much respect for our grandmother. When we, when we got our ears pierced, we, 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 uh, we took it out, <laughs> put a Band-Aid on it, <laughs> took a straw and pushed that straw down so you couldn't hardly see the tip of it. We want Grandmama to get on us, boy. Revelation 12, 17. Revelation, you see it on the screen. Revelation 12, 17, you see it on the screen. It says, then the dragon, also talking about demonic forces, demons, which are fallen angels, was very angry at the woman. Very angry. That's, a, that's an emotion. We, we see fear. We see praise. We see fear. And here we see anger uh, at the woman and went off uh, to make war against all her, all her, other, her, her other children. Those who obey God's command, those are, the, those are the children, that's you and I, those who obey God's commands and who have the message Jesus taught. Amen. So, so we see all these emotions. So not only do angels, are angels intelligent, but angels have emotion. Now, let's go to the next one. Angels exercise will. Everybody say angels have will. Just like you and I have will. That means that angels can make decisions. Angels can make decisions. Um, Luke chapter 8, I want you to go there. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, and let's look at verse number 28. Luke chapter 8, so turn there in your Bibles. Those of you watching online, if you would just grab your Bible as well, turn there to Luke chapter, Luke chapter number 8. Let's look at it. Luke chapter number 8, so angels have will. They have will. Angels are not robots. Um, angels can make a decision. Angels can choose not to obey God if they desire. How do we know? Because we saw it happen in heaven. Angels have to make a choice. So just like angels choose to worship God, we too choose to worship God. We choose to worship God. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says that Jesus became a little lower than the angel, and he made us a little lower than the angel. So the angels have an intelligence that's a little higher than our intelligence. Angels understand things that we don't understand because angels see things in the spirit realm. Angels see things, see things from a different perspective. So angels are a little higher than we are. Now, let's talk about the angel exercising will. Luke chapter number 8, verse number 28. Y'all, when you have it, say amen. Y'all got it? Amen. Look, it says, this is the New Century Version. It says, when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and said with a loud voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Watch this. I beg you. I, that there's something that I want you to do for me. That's will. There's something that I want you to do. I beg you, um, don't torture me. Don't torture me, he said, this because Jesus was commanding the evil spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had taken hold of him, though he had been kept under guard and chained hand and foot. He had broken his chains and had been forced by the demon, that's a fallen angel, demon out into lonely place. Verse number 30, Jesus asked him, what is your name? He answered, legion, because many demons were in him. Then demons beg Jesus not to send them into eternal darkness. So now we see that demons have will. There's something they want to do. They're saying, please don't cast us out. They're begging Jesus not to send them into outer darkness because they know that they've been convicted. They know they've committed a crime. They've been convicted of their crime. They've been sentenced. So they thought Jesus was come to carry out the sentence. 
So it's kind of like somebody running from the police. No, real. Yeah, demons are running from the police because, because they know that they've been sentenced. They know that they've been convicted. Now they're just waiting on their time to get caught to serve out their sentence. Y'all picking that up? Okay, so it's going, it's going to happen. It's just, it's just that, that, time, that time hasn't come. They've already been kicked out of heaven, and now they're here on this earth, and now they're just waiting for that final time for, for them to be cast down into the fiery pit. Okay, let's look at the next one. Let's look at the next one. Angel of spirit being without true physical bodies, although they do not have physical bodies, they still have personalities. Now, let's look at some of the activities. Of the, here, here comes the fun part. Let's look at some of the activities of the angels, some of the things that, that God causes angels to do. And so you'll want to write this down again because I think it's going to bless you uh, as we go into the Christmas season because we will be talking about angels and talking about some of the things that angels uh, have done and how angels made the announcements um, as, as it pertains to Jesus' birth. Amen. Some activities of angels. Angels serve God. We'll start right there. We'll start right there. Angels serve God. They serve God. Go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Angels serve God. That's one of the reasons why they were created. They were created to serve God. Again, again, now I, I need to say, you've heard me say this before, but when, when a human dies, they do not become an angel. I know, I know the T-shirts look cool, and it makes the family feel better to put wings on somebody's back. I, I get it. I get it. It makes people feel better. I get it. But when you die, you do not become an angel. An angel is an angel, and a human is a human. Amen? Oh, so because God created them different. God created them different. You, you will, so, and and I, go, I know when we, we look at kids, we say, oh, she's just a little angel. And we say, oh, you know, God gained, a, you know, heaven gained another angel. And we say things like that to make the family feel good, but that's not, that's not biblically sound. You, you can't read in the Bible where somebody died and became an angel. You won't find that in Scripture. So, again, it makes us feel good, um, but it's not biblically accurate. Amen. Amen. It's not biblically accurate. So, um, so just kind of, kind of keep keep that in your mind as we move forward. If somebody, if somebody does it, don't listen. If somebody, if you ever go to a funeral, somebody give you a shirt with somebody got some wings on it. Don't say anything about it. Y'all hear me? Don't don't say anything about it. That, that's not the time. It's not the place. Yeah. Don't say anything about it. You 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 just get the t-shirt, put it on, and you wear it, and you you honor that family. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? Uh, it's not the time to talk about that. It's not the time to not time to get into that. Let me tell you, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. this ain't in the Bible. Not a time for that. Don't say that. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. No, don't say anything. Leave it alone. You know, let the wheat and tear grow together. No, don't say anything. Don't don't get into that. Don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in that. And don't try to put people in heaven or hell. You don't you don't know. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't know. And even, even if you think you know, you probably shouldn't say it, especially if you feel like they didn't go in the right direction. Amen? So, so when, whenever, to, to all our ministers, whenever I'm in a situation like that, and, and because, because I got to be honest, the Bible says that a tree is known by the fruit it bears. So, you know, if you're, you're a good fruit inspector, you can, you know, maybe you think you know, but the reality is, is that that person's, you can't, you can't, you can't change their direction. All I can do is just minister to the people that's in front of me. I minister, to, I minister to, to the people that's in front of me, you know, because you still can change your direction if you're going in the wrong direction. So you're the ones I can minister to. So I don't get caught in trying to figure that out. If somebody come and say he's in heaven, you know, they, they say that, that's what they want to say, then praise the Lord. If that makes them feel better to think that, then praise the Lord. But the reality is, if you're not saved, if your life, if you have not given your life to Jesus, the Bible is clear. Amen. The Bible is clear. Because, because, listen to me, listen to me very carefully. This is going to sound crazy, but listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. Jesus paid for everybody's sin. There's only one sin that you're going to go to hell for. There's only one. There's only one. It's not blasphemy. Uh -uh. The only thing that you'll go to hell for is not receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because if you go to hell for your sin, that means that Jesus didn't pay for it. If Jesus paid for all sins, he paid for the sins of the world 
And when, G, when God looked at his son, he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen, the, the guard, that, that one of the guards, maybe may the one that, that, you know, used the spirit, I don't know. We don't know if that was that guard or not. But we know when that guard looked at him and that guard saw that the sun refused to shine, he saw the earthquake, he looked at this man and he says, truly, truly, this man, he must be the son of God. He believed it. He believed it. Why did he believe it? Because God accepted his sacrifice. He accepted his sacrifice uh, for the atonement of the sins of the world. For the sins of the world. Glory to God. So if you don't receive Jesus, then if you don't receive Jesus as your Savior, that's a slap in his face. If he paid, if he paid, watch this, check this out. How would you feel, how would you feel if you work, if you work your fingers to the bone and you paid your child's entire college tuition? You paid for everything. For you, if they wanted, they wanted to become a doctor. You paid for eight years of school and you paid it all up front. How much would that cost? How much? G give me a ballpark. What would a doctorate degree cost? 150,000? Probably more than that. So can we say about 200? About 200,000? Okay, now check this out. Let's say, let's say you, wrote, you wrote a check. Think about what I'm telling you. Let's say you wrote a check. You went up there and you emptied out your savings account. You emptied out your 401k. You emptied out, you emptied out the piggy bank. You cleaned all the pennies out the car seat. You put your house up. You took out a second mortgage on your house. Um, you, you sold your good car and you bought a cash car to get out of here. I mean, and you made all these sacrifices. You made all, you, 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 you're working three jobs and you saved all this money and you paid $200,000. You went to a college and you paid $200,000 and now your son or daughter can go to school and they'll have no debt. You paid it all. Now watch this. How would you feel if that child did not go to school? Somebody said, I'll be in jail. Somebody said... <laughs> Somebody said, I'll be in jail. <laughs> Somebody said, I'll be in jail. <laughs> yeah. Somebody said, Somebody said, I'll be in jail. If I did all that, I'll be in jail. But, but, but think about it. But, think about, but, but just, just think about how great of an insult. Think about, the, think about the level of insult that would be for somebody to go through all of that to make sure, watch this, that you can get into college and then you reject what they've done. Thank you, sister. I don't know what you said, but I know it was good. But guess what? That's what people do to Jesus all the time. They do the same thing to Jesus. He paid your tuition to heaven. <laughs> He paid your tuition to get to heaven. That's what he paid. He paid, and guess what? He paid in full. Glory to God. And all we have to do is just receive him as our Savior. So can you see why now? Why people, if they don't receive him? Because it's not, God doesn't send anybody to hell. Our, our choice not to receive Jesus as Savior sends us to hell. Y'all picking that up? It's our choice. It's our choice. Okay, so, active, so angels serve God. Uh, Psalm 103, verse, 103, verse number 20. Read, what, read it. What does it say? Praise the Lord. Keep going. Who? Uh-huh. What? Are y'all reading to me or y'all reading to y'all Who y'all reading to? Oh, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I tell you what, let's just read from the screen. I don't know what y'all doing. Let's read from the screen. One, two, ready, read. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word. Y'all see that? So, so angels, angels do the word of God. They're, they're designed uh, by God to serve him. They're designed to be servants of the most high God. All right. So not only do angels, do angels serve God, but angels also praise God. Uh, go to Psalm 148, since you're already in Psalm. Go to Psalm 148. Angels serve God, and angels praise God. 
Angels praise God. Hallelujah. This is so good. Psalm 148, angels praise God. Now read it from your Bible, loud as you can. Don't, don't listen to your neighbor. <laughs> Y'all ready? <laughs> Y'all ready? One, two, ready, read. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> read, Brittany. <laughs> That's it. So, so it says, praise to the Lord, all ye angels. So angels praise God. They're not robots, ladies and gentlemen. They're not robots. They praise God because, because, because they love God. They praise him and they honor him and they respect God the same way, the same way we are to respect him, the same way we are to honor him. The angels do the same thing. They, they are commanded to praise God, and they do. Not only do they praise God, but angels worship God. Don't, don't turn, look on the screen. Angels worship God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Angels worship God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Let's read it aloud and together. Those of you that are looking at the screen. One, two, ready, read. Uh huh. Let all the angels of God do what? He said, let all the angels of God, let all the angels worship him. I like that. Let all the angels of God worship him. So the angels not only praise God, but they also worship God. Listen to this. Check this out. Go to Job chapter 1. I'm going to show you something real quick. Go to Job chapter 1. This is probably going to be pretty interesting. Go to Job chapter 1. I told you we have, we have several scriptures. Job chapter 1. So angels serve God, they praise God, they worship God, and Job chapter 1, I want you to read it, and I want you to tell me what you think the next point is. You read it from your, you read from the screen, from your Bible, tell me what you think the next point is. Angels do what? Job chapter 1, verse 6. I mean, just tell me, just tell me what you think the point is. They do What? What do you think, <laughs> Miss Cindy? <laughs> they what? Uh, very, very, very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I like that. Angels appear before God. Angels appear before God. She said they report to God. But angels appear before God. So, so the angels that are, that are here on the earth doing the bidding of God, angels that are in heaven doing the bidding of God, there, there comes a time when God calls them to appear before him. He calls them, but as a matter of fact, that the Job said that was a time that it happened. Matter of fact, your Bible may call them the sons of God. Your Bible may call them the sons of God. So sons of God are oftentimes indicative of the angels of God. So the angels are oftentimes called to come report before God. And God God's a good father. He wants to check in. He wants to see how things are going. So God calls them to come to, come to him. And matter of fact, that was a time that the Bible says that God called, his, <laughs> called the angels and Satan showed up. <laughs> Satan showed, he's an angel. He's like, okay, you know, God called the sons. Okay, I'm going to show up. So Satan, Satan, show, Satan shows up, and God's like, yo, what you doing here, player? He was like, man, I'm just chilling. I'm just walking to it from the earth, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Seeking somebody to eat up. <laughs> so angels, angels appear before God. Isn't that amazing? Angels appear before God. Um, let's go to the next one. Uh, matter of fact, go, go, to, go to Revelation. This is going to be a good one. Revelation chapter 7. Let's see if you guys can figure this one out. Revelation chapter 7, verse number 1. Revelation chapter 7. It's all in the back. Some of y'all going in the wrong direction. Revelation chapter 7, verse number 1. Where do you think that point is? So, say again. I heard, I heard protect. Okay. What do you think? What do you think that point is? Revelation, Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. You like, you, you like some of your mind. Yeah. Very, very close. He said carry out the will of God. Very close. What do y'all think it is? Anybody else? Take direction. Okay. That's good. It says, and after these, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Now, 
Um, so angels are instruments of God's judgment. Write that down if you don't have it. Angels are instruments of God's judgment. Oftentimes in Scripture, you'll see how angels are, care, are, are pronouncing a judgment. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelations, you, you're going to see uh, in, in, the, um, in the rapture, when the rapture that is to come, you're going to see that there's going to be angels that God's going to send on assignment. Angels are going to blow certain trumpets. When angels blow certain trumpets, or, or, there are going to be angels that blow certain trumpets, and there are going to be angels that lose certain seals. Y'all, y'all heard, you remember that? They're going to lose certain seals, and this seal was loose. A trumpet blew, and this seal was loose. And so in that particular time, God's going to use angels to proclaim his judgment on the earth. He's going to use those angels to do that, to proclaim those judgments. Amen. All right. Okay. Here's a, here's a good one. Here, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Um, I want y'all to turn, turn there. Go to Acts chapter. Y'all are going to like this one. Go to Acts chapter 12. You're really going to like this one. Acts chapter 12. I know y'all don't like talking about judgment. <laughs> Acts chapter 12. <laughs> Acts chapter 12. Let's look at something good. Let's look at something gooder. Are y'all there? Y'all are Acts chapter 12? Y'all are? What about the rest of y'all? Y'all got it? <laughs> Acts chapter 12, verse number 5. Let's, let's, let's figure this out. Verse number 5. I like this one, y'all. I like this one. Oh, this one's so good. Matter of fact, let's read this one together. Let's look at the screen. Let's read this one together. This one is so good. Where are we at? Acts 12, 5. All right, let's read it from the screen. One, two, ready to read. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh huh. Stop, stop right there. Stop right there, Jerry. What, what's happening so far? What's happening right now? What's happening? He, who's in prison? Peter. Peter. What, what else is going on? This, so Peter's in prison. What's the church doing? Praying. That church is praying. That, that, that's that's going to be important. Peter's in prison. Church is praying. And uh, Herod's about to bring him out. And he was bound with two chains. I think that's where the dude got his name from. Uh, he was bound. He was bound with two chains uh, between two soldiers. <laughs> and the God, the God before the door. Let's keep in the prison. Okay, go to the next one. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. All right, one, two, ready, read. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-oh. That's what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Oh, I like that. Keep going. Oh, I like that. That's so cool. Read on. Keep going. What do you think the point is? Say what? <laughs> what do you think the point is? Huh? Okay, very good. Very good. That's close. Angels hear our prayers. What, what do you think the point is? He's very close. What do you think the point is? Say, say again. Say what? Angels. Angels bring answers to prayer. Write that down. Or they carry out uh, the answer to your prayer. Write that down. Angels bring answer to prayers. So when we pray and we pray to God, sometimes God will send an angel to bring us the answer for the prayer. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful to know that, that God sends angels and angels will come with your answer? Angels. Hallelujah. He was in prison. The church was in constant prayer. God sent an angel to go down there and set, and set Peter free. And guess what? That's exactly what he does. He comes down and he does the will of God. Now, um, let, let me share this. Uh, there, 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 are, there are many people who teach that we have, we have guardian angels or that every person is assigned an angel. Now, the Bible doesn't 
say that each human is assigned one angel. The Bible doesn't say that. Um, what the Bible says is that God will give his angels charge over you to protect you. It's not our choice. It's God's choice. It's God's choice who he sends and when he sends them. Y'all getting that? Glory to God. So, so, so in other words, in other words, in other words, we don't command angels to do things for us. So you can't just pray and say, and say angel, I want you to go over here and do X, Y, Z. Because, because the angels are only subject to God. So we pray to God, and then God directs the angels. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Now, we can ask God to send angels. When I pray over this church, I ask God to encamp this building with angels. I ask God to do that, but I don't pray specifically to an angel. Are y'all picking that up? So we pray, and we can ask God to do X, Y, Z, and we can ask God to do that, but it's God. It's God who releases the angel because God knows what angel you need when you need them. That is so good right there. Hallelujah. And God will oftentimes send an angel with the answer to your prayer. And, and sometimes the angel will show up. And the Bible says be careful how we entertain strangers because many times we entertain angels unaware. We entertain angels unaware. You may be on the side of the road. And I, I mean, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if I've ever met an angel. I pray that when I get to heaven, God says, you know what, that guy, that was an angel. Okay. But you may be on the side of the road and somebody just show up in the nick of time. They show up and they, you, they, they go on the side of the road and they help you. They fix whatever you got problem you had and then they're gone and you have no idea who that was. You have no idea. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I had a friend of mine at, at, at the church we went to, um, my, the first church I was with, um, um, Faith Tabernacle. Um, there was a, a gentleman in the church. That, that was his testimony. His wife had gotten sick. His wife had gotten sick and she was, she was sick almost unto death. And he didn't have money to pay the bill. And he says he's standing at the counter. They told him how much the bill was. He has to pay this bill in order for her to get this next level of treatment. He didn't have the money. He's standing there. He didn't know what to do. Here's what he says. He said this tall man walked in. He said he had no idea who this man was. This tall man walked in. He, had a, he told him, you know, what was going on here. You know, I got, I got to pay this bill. He says, what he, said. he says the man paid the bill for him. And this was thousands of dollars. The man paid the bill. He looked down. And the lady was taking the check, and she was filling out the paperwork. He looked up. The doors were closing. The doors were swinging. He walked to the door, opened the door, looked down the hall, and the man was nowhere to be found. Now, that's not my testimony. That's his testimony. But he told it with so much conviction. And, he, and as a matter of fact, um, his wife was able to get the treatment. She was able to live on. And so whoever paid, however it happened, he said that he, said that he believes it was an angel because there's no way that man could have gone out of his sight that fast. He's walking right behind him. There's no way it could have happened. No way it could have happened. So, so God is God's responsibility to send those angels when he desires to send them. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. All right. So angels bring answers to prayers. Angels bring answers to prayer. Go to Acts chapter 8. Y'all doing real good. We got two more, then we're done. Go to Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8. They possess intelligence. They show emotion. They exercise will. They serve God. They praise God. They worship God. They appear before God. They're instruments of God's judgment. Angels bring answers to prayer. Acts chapter 8, verse number 26. Y'all been doing real good at figuring these out. Acts chapter 8, verse number 26. Read and tell me what you think that point is. We're talking about angels. We're talking about understanding angels. And again, this is going to help you as we go into the Christmas season. It's going to help you when you see that angels showed up, an angel appeared. You're going to hear songs about angels. You're going to hear songs. It's going to help you appreciate the season more. more we say what? Close. Very close. Huh? Yeah, they are messengers, indeed. Uh, they bring messages from God, yes. What do you think this point is? It's, let's, let's read it. Look up at the screen. Let's read it. Let's read it. One, two, ready to read. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, if, if, if you know this story, you know this story, uh, the angel told Philip, 
where to go because when he went down this road, he ran into what's called an Ethiopian eunuch. He ran into uh, this Ethiopian eunuch who was, who was in the queen's palace, who was designed to help look after the queen. He ran to the eunuch. Now, he gets down there. The queen, I mean, the, the eunuch was reading from a scroll. He was reading a, a chapter from the book of Isaiah, of what we know as the book of Isaiah. He was reading it. Um, um, he, he goes to him. Philip goes to him and says, do you understand what you're reading? He says, no, I don't understand. Philip then preaches Jesus to him, and the Ethiopian eunuch got saved. Now, what do you think the point is? What do you think the point is? Huh? Very good. Write this down. Angels aid in winning souls to Christ. Angels aid in winning souls to Christ. The angel told Philip where to go. Told Philip when Philip got there, Philip knew exactly what to do. Why? Because the angel told him. Angel told him where to go, told him exactly what he needed to do when he get there. So the angel, the angel knew that the Ethiopian eunuch was ready. He knew that he was hungry. And so he sent him to the right place at the right time. So angels aid in soul winning. We see it, we see it happen here in Scripture. Angels, uh, angels aid in that. Angels aid in getting people to the right place, getting people to the right point. They aid in that. Glory to God. Um, people who, people who, who cannot or do not have the Holy Spirit, sometimes God have to use angels to push them along. You have to use angels to come. Now, we have the Holy Spirit, so God can speak through us through the agency of the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are saved, the Holy Spirit lives within us, within us. So God can speak to us in our heart. He can speak through the Holy Spirit. He can use his word to speak to us. But people who don't have the Holy Spirit, oftentimes God have to, he has to use angels to kind of manipulate them and, and cause them to go to where, where they need to go. He has to, use the whole, he has to use angels. So angels aid um, in winning people to Christ. That's very good. All right, last one, last one. Last one, uh, Acts chapter 27. You already the book of Acts. Just go to chapter 27. Here's the last one. I don't have time for anything else. I got more word than I have time. Acts chapter 27. Let's look at this one. And again, this is going to help us. It's going to help us as we understand the season, understand how God uses angels. And it helps me check this off my list from my minister's class. <laughs> <laughs> Acts chapter 27. 27. I, I might have said 23. I meant 27. Acts chapter 27, verse 23. Is that what you meant, Miss Cookie? Okay. Acts chapter 27, verse 23. All right, read it from your Bible. <laughs> Y'all know I'm going to say something, right? <laughs> Yeah, I know I'm going to say something. <laughs> I know, right? But two people, <laughs> y'all know. That's why I like, no, I'm going to say something. <laughs> All right, let's read from the screen, cheering. <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, ready to read. <laughs> Uh-huh. What do you think the point is? Huh? Click. Uh-huh. Angels, y'all, y'all both y'all are right. Angels encourage in times of danger. Write that down. Angels encourage us in times of danger. Angels encourage us in times of danger. When we, when, when we feel like our life is being threatened, we feel like, you know, we're at the end of our rope. Angels, God has a way of sending angels to come and encourage us. And it's amazing how he does it. Angels come. And again, angels are spirit beings. They don't necessarily have bodies like we understand. They have spiritual bodies. Their bodies are not, not like ours. Um, can God allow them to take the form of a, of a, of a man form? I'm, I'm sure he can because we, we've seen it in Scripture. Um, we've seen it in Scripture. Um, when they were sitting on, the, sitting on the, the stone that was rolled away, they thought it was a man uh, sitting there. So, yeah, we, we've seen it. We've seen it in Scripture. All right. So angels encourage in times of danger. He said to Paul, he says, man, don't be afraid. He says, 
He says, you must be brought out to seizure, but indeed, God has granted you all of these who sell with you. So he tells him, he says, man, listen, don't worry about it. Yeah, you're going to have some peril. You're going to have some, some difficulty, but don't worry. Man, God's got you. And I think that's amazing how God uses angels. It's amazing how he uses angels. Now, this is just the beginning. So there's a lot more things that we're going to discuss about angels, a lot more things that we need to understand about angels. And then when we get to Christmas time and you hear, you know, the angels we have heard on high and all that, you're gonna, when you hear those songs, man, you're going to have a deeper appreciation um, about angels and what they mean and what they mean uh, to us and how they've impacted our lives and to continue to impact the world. Amen? Amen. And give God a round of applause. Mm-hmm. The gender, I, I have to look that up. I have to look that up. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever. I'm not sure if I, if I, if I've ever heard of a female angel. I don't know. That's a very. That's a very good question. You got me thinking. You got me straight tripping, boo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to check that out. All right, y'all. That's a good question, though. Somebody look that up and tell me. All right. Let's go to the announcement.